Let's talk about the number one food that has the most vitamin K2. But I want to just cover a, a little bit of history on vitamin K2. Uh, you see this book right here is called Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by Dr. Weston Price. Okay. He was a dentist, but he did a lot of research back in the 30s and the 40s. And he visited these remote cultures that ate very, very healthy foods. And he was trying to identify what was it about their diet that generated such amazing teeth. As compared to nowadays, everyone needs braces. You know, we have our wisdom teeth pulled because there's not enough space in our skull. Uh, the teeth are overcrowded. A lot of problems with overbite, underbite. Not to mention my teeth, I pretty much had cavities in every single tooth in my skull. So Weston Price looked at uh, calcium. He looked at the fat soluble vitamins. Maybe at first he thought it was vitamin D or vitamin A or vitamin E, but at the time vitamin K2 wasn't identified. And so it was really interesting that he had a term for it called activator X, kind of like the X factor, just something in addition to these regular fat soluble vitamins that is creating really good teeth, like really good bones, good bone structure, and overall good health. He just didn't know about vitamin K2 because it wasn't discovered yet. And so he looked at cultures in the Swiss Alps, and he found that they ate a lot of grass-fed butter and cheese and uh, really, really natural things. And so he identified their teeth being just like really, really good. Fast forward, we know now it's vitamin K2. There's vitamin K1, that's all about clotting. And then there's vitamin K2, which is all about calcium transportation. Vitamin K2 works with vitamin D, okay? Now, vitamin D helps a person absorb calcium in the intestines by a factor of 20 times. If someone doesn't have enough vitamin D, calcium really won't be absorbed in the blood too well. And so vitamin D is all about raising calcium in the blood, but vitamin K2 takes it to the next level. It takes the calcium from the blood and it pushes into the bone. And so the way it does this is it activates certain proteins. And another thing that's really interesting about vitamin K2, um, it uses a transport system called LDL, that so-called bad cholesterol that everyone's trying to avoid. Well, it takes a ride in LDL through the body and then it ends up in your bones. So it makes your bones really, really solid. It helps certain parts of your teeth become very, very strong. It keeps calcium from building up in the arteries. It prevents vascular calcification. It also prevents calcium from ending up in your cartilage or in your joints as in arthritis, things like that. So it's all about calcium transportation. It activates a very important cell called the beta cell in your pancreas, which makes insulin more sensitive. So if a person has insulin resistance, which the majority of the population has, it can really help someone's blood sugar by improving insulin resistance because now it's going to make insulin more sensitive. And then your body can make less insulin. It helps generate more ATP or energy in the muscle cell. You're going to have a lot more energy to do exercise. It also is involved in supporting the cells that make testosterone. It also works on the brain. It improves spatial learning as well as memory, which is pretty cool. And like I said before, it also inhibits this calcium buildup in the arteries and in the joints. So you can see it's a very, very important vitamin and uh, we need to have it in our diet. Unfortunately, there's no requirements or RDAs for K2 yet, even though we need it. Now, the majority of vitamin K2 comes from bacteria. And so when a cow eats grass, that is loaded with vitamin K1, that vitamin K1 changes into vitamin K2 with the help of bacteria. Vitamin K1 and vitamin K2 are fat soluble vitamins. So it is stored in fat. So if someone goes low fat or they're on medications that block cholesterol, for example, they may not get enough vitamin K2. At least the microbes in your own gut do make some of the K2 that you have in your body, okay? And that's made from vitamin K1. So there's a little conversion going on in your gut. And as a side note, E. coli is one of the bacteria that has this ability to help you make K2. And I'm not talking about the pathogenic version. I'm talking about the version that is fairly friendly in your body. It actually makes certain B vitamins and it also makes vitamin K2 from vitamin K1, which is interesting. The number one food, that has the most vitamin K2 is 
cheese. There is one other food that has more vitamin K2, but most people are not going to consume it. So I didn't want to even mention that. Cheese is number two, but I'm just going to put it number one because most people will consume cheese. Uh, the number one product is really NATO, which is a fermented soybean, which uh, if you ever tasted it, you probably would not like it too much. It, it's kind of an acquired taste. It's kind of like uh, my dad uh, liking Limburger cheese, right? Which basically has a very unique flavor, which we all couldn't stand growing up. But recently I tasted some of it and actually now I kind of like it. It does not taste like it smells, but as far as the abundance of K2, cheese is at the very top of the list. Mainly it's the hard cheeses, but it's also in the soft cheeses. But out of all of the hard cheeses and the soft cheeses, there's one cheese that it ranks number one, and that is called the Munster cheese, okay, which is grown in the mountains of France, where they create this cheese with raw milk, not the pasteurized milk that they use in the US. Now it is true that vitamin K2 will survive some of the pasteurization, the heating of the cheese, but it also kills off the microbes, right? That are making the K2. So you're always going to find more vitamin K2 in things that are more raw, especially when we get into cheese. There's all sorts of versions of vitamin K2, right? There's just kind of like these subset versions of vitamin K2. You have like the MK4, um, MK7, et cetera. But in cheese, you have... MK4, MK5, you have MK6, MK7, MK8, and also MK9. So you have a huge variety of different versions of this vitamin K2 as compared to some other foods that may only have one version, like maybe MK4 or MK7. But if you can find some raw cheese, that would always be better. Usually European cheese, high quality. Uh, hard cheeses are going to have a little bit more. Soft cheeses will have a little bit less, but you're still going to get a good amount of vitamin K2 in cheese. Now, some people are going to say, well, wow, I thought this saturated fat in the cheese was bad, right? It's going to create heart problems. And now I'm confused because vitamin K2 removes the calcium out of the arteries, and that also helps prevent heart disease. So what's more important, removing the calcium from the arteries or the cholesterol that's building up from all these fatty foods? Well, just to clear the confusion, I'm going to put some links down below of some clinical trials that I think you'll find interesting, completely refuting this data that saturated fat uh, will make you die earlier or increase your risk for heart attacks or other problems. There's absolutely no evidence to show that saturated fat is going to worsen your health or cause diabetes. Unfortunately, there's recommendations uh, that we should increase our unsaturated fats, the omega-6, to replace the saturated fats is bad information. Now, I just have to say something about those recommendations, the governmental recommendations. Uh, first of all, anything related to health that's recommended by the government um, might not be true. I mean, if you think about it, who is the government? Is there one person? Is there a group? Is there a panel? Are these recommendations slightly biased from various groups that can have influence over these policies? The answer is a big fat yes. There's definitely a revolving door between industry and government kind of goes back and forth. So anything recommended relating to health from the government, take it with a grain of salt. So we have cheese, really good source of vitamin K2. We also have grass-fed butter. Butter that is made from cows that ate grains have very little vitamin K2. Why is that? Because grains don't have a lot of K1. Grass has a lot of K1, and that K1 gets converted into the K2. So it's grass-fed, it's grass-finished, or another way to say that is 100% grass-fed. That's what you want to consume as far as the butter and other foods if you want to get more K2. The cool thing about butter is that butter has like great amounts of vitamin A, vitamin E, it has vitamin D, and it has vitamin K2. It's really good for someone that has osteoporosis or osteopenia or osteomalacia or even rickets. These are all problems with the bone. And then you have things like uh, goose liver, duck liver, uh, duck fat, eel. Yes, eel is loaded with vitamin K2. Beef liver or lamb liver, liver has vitamin K2. Ground beef, grass-fed hot dogs. I'm not talking about the process, you know, hot dogs that you would get when you go to a ball game or something like that. I'm talking about like high quality 
grass fed, no sugar added, clean hot dogs has vitamin K2. Bacon, I'm not talking about the commercial regular bacon. I'm talking about a higher quality bacon has K2. In fact, out of all the meats, pork has the most vitamin K2, which is interesting. And then you also have like sauerkraut. It's a fermented product that has vitamin K2 with the help of the bacteria. And also cod liver oil is another great thing, especially for children growing up. A woman who is lactating, a child who is growing up should have on a regular basis, high quality cheese, unless there's some allergy and high quality butter and cod liver oil. And uh, not only will that help them avoid getting braces, but it's going to improve their entire health. And if you're taking vitamin D, always make sure you take vitamin K2 with it because they work hand in hand. Sometimes people are concerned with the toxicity of vitamin D, but if you take vitamin K2, okay, and magnesium, uh, you can greatly offset the toxicity that could potentially occur if you're taking massive amounts for many, many, many months. Now, since we're on the topic of vitamin K2, there's a lot more to know about it. You should check out this video that I did that has quite a few views. I'll put it up right here.